Okay, we have two subjects today. I'm going to talk about Liz Cheney. There's some interesting stuff uh, involving politics uh, about Liz uh, that you may not know. And also, we're going to uh, hit on uh, Prince uh, Edward. And uh, so that's what the video we've got today. I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It just makes an awful big difference. Maybe you know somebody else who might subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. So Liz Cheney, interesting. You know, there's this controversy about Kevin McCarthy being leader of the. Um, um, uh, Republicans, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, Kevin McCarthy as uh, Speaker of the House. They can elect someone who's not even in the Senate at all, and that would be perfect for Liz Cheney. She's in the Senate, just not uh, a fair-haired child of the Republican Party right now. So, they will talk about that and Liz Cheney. Then, I want to see about Prince Edward. Okay, so he and Princess Anne have now been named as, I guess, the top folks who would uh, step in for or speak for or represent somehow uh, King Charles if uh, that were need to be the case. I'll look into that a little bit and let you know what I find out, but we'll do a drawing on Prince Edward uh, in this new role and see how that goes. So, I hope you like it. So, it's very interesting about what can happen in uh, U.S. Uh, politics. So, apparently, you don't have to be a member of Congress uh, to be Speaker of the House. It's traditionally that's how it's been done and that's who's been nominated for that, but it doesn't have to be that way. Anyone can be nominated for Speaker of the House. And um, now Kevin McCarthy has just gone through a process where he got uh, a majority of votes uh, from his party to go on to the next step towards that speakership. But could someone else challenge him? Just like someone's challenging Mitch McConnell for his uh, leadership role. Anyway, so we'll do that. And then uh, Prince Edward and then Prince Anne have both been uh, named by Charles, King Charles III, as uh, his counselors of state who can step in for him if he's unwell or for some reason he can't perform his duties. They could step in and, uh, and uh, you know, replace him. I don't know if it's temporary, but we'll do a little uh, poll on uh, uh, Prince Edward uh, in that regard. So... Uh, that's what we'll do. So uh, let's uh, get started. I thought I'd use this really cool deck, this Rack, Rackham uh, Tarot, which is uh, just beautiful. And I'll tell you some more about these cards uh, at the end of this video. You know, I'll kind of explain what, what these cards, how they came to be and, and all that, but they're beautiful as you can see. So Princess Anne, Princess Anne, Counselor of State. How amazing that that is a position that she's set for. Um, and interesting that it's not Prince William, isn't it? Um, but I suppose it's just not how it works. So Princess Anne and, um, and Edward as counselors of state. We'll do this first and then we'll move on to Liz Cheney. So Princess Anne, but specifically uh, Prince Edward as counselors of state. So let's have a moment of meditation. Let's do that. Originally, I just wanted to do this uh, focusing on Prince Edward, but somehow Princess Anne uh, weaseled her way into my thoughts. So I have to go with that and realize there's probably a reason for it. So well, this will be a combination. I'll do a full Celtic cross so that we'll have some cards <coughs> which uh, <coughs> speak to Anne and some cards that speak to Edward. So Princess Anne and Prince Edward. Princess Anne. 
and Prince Edward. Full Celtic cross. I'll do uh, six cards first and then another, another four. Like I typically do if you watch me all, all, all the time. One, two, three. And I want to mention if you've been watching my videos and you haven't subscribed, it just makes a big difference if you would. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, makes means that I can keep on doing these videos if you like them. So let's do these first few cards to kind of give us a read on uh, Princess Anne and Prince Edward together for that council estate situation. What can the cards tell us about that? The first one up, uh, interesting, is the Seven of Cups. And you know, cups are uh, compassion, emotion, um, really heartfelt uh, situations. And the Seven of Cups specifically, I wanna get a little cheat sheet out here just to put me on the exact right path is uh, illusion and delusion. So the signifier of this whole thing is that is that seven of cups full of compassion and and with an overlay of illusion and delusion. So what does this mean? Maybe the next card will help define it. But is there some mystery here? Is there some uh, uh, magic happening before our eyes to make us kind of look another way? Um, towards Anne and Edward instead of who it would normally be. Hmm. The uh, challenge uh, to this, uh, illusion and delusion, of uh, putting Anne and Edward in these positions of counselors of state, is um, this uh, 15. The 15 of the Major Arcana is um, the devil. So this is being chained to lesser intentions. So the challenge to this illusion and delusion is this lesser intentions and it just I've got to tell you what's just coming to me is is this some sort of a draw to um, take our attention away from uh, Prince Harry right now and all of the release of pending releases of his uh, book and and uh, information uh, that might be detrimental to Charles so Charles this illusion and delusion this smoke screen that's going out by naming Anne and Edward as the Council's estate is uh, is challenged by some being chained to lesser intention. The base of this then, with this Ace of Wands, this is uh, Wands are actions, plans, forward movement, and this Ace of Wands is a great big you know offer of, of some kind of action. Okay, so the whole basis of this thing is to put something um, major out there to draw attention to the monarchy. I think in this regard in, uh, to to focus the monarchy away from something else and into this, uh, the the past of this with this four of cups. Okay, four of cups is typically being offered something that you don't necessarily want. And you know what? Let me take a minute here to go back and look at these cards closely because they're kind of. Um, uh, complicated cards in that you don't see all the detail if you don't look very carefully. So let's take a minute to, to look at this illusion and delusion right here. What is it uh, showing us here? It's showing here almost this priestess, uh, you know, with her, her robes drawn up around her. She's ushering forth these uh, little imps in front of her while she's hiding everything else behind her. And it's all traveling right next to an, uh, a river, which uh, water is always uh, talking about passions or emotions. And then the challenge with this devil is we can see that this devil is actually dancing uh, with uh, this princess, leading this princess uh, along the challenge. The basis of this then with this great big action, this great big plan, is it shows us here that this huge um, imposing twisted tree is the major focus of this big action, okay, this big plan. There's some little details that you could only pick out, I think, if you were sitting right here with me, but there's some tiny little figures right here who are poking at the roots of this tree. I'm going to say this is um, uh, Prince Harry and Meghan, actually, poking at the roots of this tree of monarchy. So this is a big plan that the monarchy, which is Charles, is uh, is all sitting on top of. And then with the past of this, with this Four of Cups, which again is typically being offered something that you don't necessarily want. And it's interesting if you can see really deep into this card that right here you've got an ocean, okay, or a body of water. And the, the 
a fender really is underneath the water kind of like mermaids almost holding up uh, something here to be offered to these people above who are in this tiny little vessel okay and uh, so it's almost baiting them instead of them fishing for something else so in the past again I think this isn't necessarily uh, Harry and Megan um, uh, Although, I will say that this fella here is kind of reddish colored, like makes you think of Harry's hair. And this uh, maiden here seems to be uh, handling the tiller of this little craft. So she's steering along, kind of like, I think, Megan maybe steering their careers along. And um, because originally I wanted to say that this could be the British public, but I don't think it is. I think this is something that's being offered up to, to distract from that. Interesting. In the sky of this reading is this oh so this is the fool off on that new journey and that is charles of course he's off on this new journey as the you know the the sovereign and uh so you think that he's got with him all that he needs to uh take him on this journey but remember he's a babe in the woods as far as this is concerned and then the final outcome for princess anne and edward as counselors of state uh, what can the cards tell us and we come up with this two of wands again wands being action plans forward movement fire and uh and you've got here the steadfast uh tree uh really uh make and short-term plans two of wands by the way is is kind of grasp uh this uh maiden to you know influence i would suppose her journey it kind of stops her in her tracks but this two of wands is short-term planning so this could be something that's telling us, um, you know, this is a, a short-term plan to solve a long-term uh, issue. Now let's try to focus in, like I intended originally, on Edward. So Edward, Edward in this plan uh, for uh, Counselor of State. What can the cards tell us about Edward specifically in this plan about Counselors of State? Interesting, interesting. Okay, so the first card, which is going to be the very self of that question. What about Edward as Counselor of State? And, uh, well, this is interesting. So uh, this is a sword. This is a knight of swords. Swords, of course, are truth, justice, rules, law. And this uh, a knight is Edward. This is him. The, the knight is going to fight for whatever um, um, uh, remit the, um, the, the royal house has given him. And so Edward is, is, I guess, as a signature of this question, is being seen as someone who would fight for those, for those rights, those rules, that truth, that justice. But it's in the environment of what? It's in the environment of this Ten of Cups. Ten of Cups is, is, speaks to familial passions. Okay, and that's exactly where we're at in this. Is this, uh, and, but look at the, the beautiful rainbow above. So this knight fighting for that uh, justice, those rules, that law, is in the environment of this familial passion. Interesting. And then the hopes and the fears for all of that. Ah, lovers. Finding that perfect pairing, that perfect combination. Could be uh, Anne and Edward are the perfect duo to, um, to guide if there's an issue uh, with Charles. And let's face it, he has to recognize that he's not in perfect health. And instead of throwing William into the mix, this gives us some steadfast leadership in Anne and Edward. Anne keeps coming right back into it. Anne and Edward as uh, together uh, being able to guide that uh, monarchy uh, while whatever crises uh, may occur, occurs. And but then the final outcome, I'm gonna shuffle these up a little bit. Uh, the final outcome for this interesting counselors of state, look at that. Let's see what the final outcome is. Fell out of the deck, so we'll have to see. And it's reversed. I don't like reverse cards. I don't um, trust my interpretation for reverse cards. That's why I don't include them in my readings. But when they happen, I just feel like this must mean I need to pay attention to this, okay? So if this card were not reversed, 
It's the Ten of Swords. And I just want to get this interpretation exactly right. So I want to read here the Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords is failure, success, loss, change, transition, decay, and release. And it's typically um, displayed as Ten Swords in the back of someone on the ground. So the likely outcome of this, but it's in reverse. Okay. So if this was this way, this tells this is the end of a cycle. This is the absolute end of a cycle. But since this is reversed, I think this is telling us in the case of. That's how I'm going to interpret it. So this is intended to protect the monarchy in the case of. Not necessarily an end, but in case there were one. So just to read it over quickly again, so what about this Council of States with Anne and Edward uh, being named? It starts out with this Seven of Cups, which is illusion and delusion, kind of distracting while establishing an important uh, 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 mark for the monarchy, uh, uh, a little distraction from what's going on in the public right now. But it's challenged by this um, 15, which is uh, being tied to lesser intentions. The devil is what this card typically is. It's challenged by that. So it's not a pure uh, movement. It's got some lesser intentions chained to it. And then the, but it's underscored by this ace of wands, just a great big movement, a great big plan. And then in the past of this, with this four of cups, is being offered something that you don't necessarily want. So it's not something that we, we would want to take advantage of, or, or even the issues that are going on with Harry and Meghan right now. So that's what's in the past. In the sky of this, is, it couldn't be clearer, the fool is what's represented here. And this is Charles off on his new journey. The fool represents a new journey, taking on a new task. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing with this two of wands is just a short-term plan. It's a short-term plan to uh, fend off the Harry um, danger and a short-term plan uh, in the case that the king were incapacitated for some reason that someone needed to step in, kind of like a vice president of the United States. But the very self of that question, and I wanted to focus on Edward here, is that he is this knight of swords. And I'm going to tell you what, this is also Anne. She, they both would fight for those rules, that truth, that justice, that law. And they, they are in the environment of this ten of cups, all about passion, all about feelings. And this is familial. When you get this ten of, of cups, it's, it lends to a familial feeling, the monarchy. The royal family and then the uh, hopes and the fears with these lovers is that this is a perfect pairing that Anne and Edward would be this perfect pairing to really uh, care about what's happening and fill in that spot and then the uh, likely outcome of the whole thing is just exactly what I said that reverse card that ten of swords which is typically the end of a cycle but in this case it's in case of an end of a cycle if things got topsy-turvy that's what that's about love it very on point couldn't have asked for a better uh, interpretation. Now, let's get right on to Liz Cheney <clears throat> in uh, U.S. politics uh, and uh, with this uh, Speaker of the House situation. Now, Kevin McCarthy, like I said, has already passed one hurdle where the members have uh, uh, voted him past uh, or kind of like approving his... Um, candidacy, I suppose you could say, uh, for Speaker of the House. doesn't have to be a member of Congress, uh, but I want to focus on Liz Cheney in this instance and see what can the cards tell us about Liz Cheney probably regarding this uh, thing. And we'll do six cards for Liz. One, two. Remember, if you haven't subscribed and you can subscribe, it just makes a big difference. It helps me a lot, and it means that I can keep making these videos. Okay, Liz Cheney and, uh, and this uh, Speaker of the House situation. First card. Okay, so we have here the three of coins putting something together for public display. Interesting, because that is in fact what this position is. It's having someone as a position of authority putting forth all the issues that have to eventually go to the Senate, uh, putting something together for public display. Liz Cheney in this regard. And the challenge to that is this Knight of Cups. It's an impassioned, compassionate uh, position. Uh, this, oh no, this is the page. This is the page of cups. Okay, so this is just a suggestion. Liz Cheney at this point is just a whisper in someone's ear. That's the challenge to this for her. The base of this whole thing with the strength card, the major arcana, is the strength that's required for that position. So interesting, the Kevin McCarthy has already showed that he has a significant amount of approval from his colleagues uh, in the Congress, but 
this whole thing has to be built on a position of strength and perhaps Liz isn't there because of her being ousted. And then the past of this with this five of uh, pentacles, which is being left out in the cold. That's exactly where she's in. She has been left out in the cold. She's kind of been ousted by Kevin McCarthy. And there she is, just kind of a broken down woman uh, uh, surveying what's going on in the sky of this for Liz Cheney and this uh, house speakership. Ah, is this nine of coins. This is the, the person who's typically very well um, uh, rich. She has everything that she needs. And, uh, and this one here, this woman who's so very wealthy is kind of telling this parrot, be quiet, hush. And it's funny because that's her, her expensive toy of the day and it's annoying to her. Liz Cheney in the sky represented by this nine of pentacles and then the likely outcome is ah with this five of the major arcana and this is the hierophant. So this is the government. Perfect card to get for this question because she would be um, the second in line. First would be the vice president take over the president camp and then the speaker of the house. So it's interesting that this is uh, talking about government. Let's draw one more card to see if there's some possibility that Liz Cheney can be instrumental somehow in this position. Final card. Ah, Ten of Cups, just like I got from the previous reading. Remember, these are emotional, familial, or generational, you could say, appointments. And um, does it give us a clear, could she even, would she even become Speaker of the House in this Congress? Would Liz Cheney become Speaker of the House in this Congress? And we've got the um, Ace there's a lot of value in it. The Ace of Coins is value and just a great big um, a movement forward in that value. So it's interesting here. This card is represented by two little babes hidden under this tree trunk and uh, with this old woman who I think is going to be Liz Cheney trying to coax them out. You know what? She would be a valuable asset in that regard, but she has to coax these children, co coax these children out from under their protection of that uh, sturdy tree, which would be the Republican uh, Party, uh, all voting for Kim McCarthy. Yeah, I think it's 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 she would be strong in that position, but this doesn't tell us that that's what's going to happen, and I have to go with that interpretation. So yeah, it's not something that would happen, but these cards indicate that she would be a, a good influence along those cards. So just to read back quickly, Liz Cheney for Speaker of the House, it's shown up here as building something for public display. It's challenged by uh, this, uh, just a mere suggestion of a compassionate uh, situation. Okay, looking down into this pool of water, kind of talking to this surprised fish about that this could happen. The base of this whole thing is the strength that this position has to be built on. And in the past of it is Liz Cheney as the ousted old woman left out in the cold with his five of pentacles. In the sky of this is Liz Cheney again as the very wealthy woman, but telling her party to hush, quiet down these insane uh, attack that have been going on for the last couple of years and then uh, the likely outcome for that is the government. The government is what is the major um, consideration in all of this. Who can more easily step in if they had to be president? And then in this, the final uh, uh, two more interpretive cards I hope to get a definite answer was this Ten of Cups which is talking to us about generational passions which may mean it's not something that's typically happened and so that's a leading decider in the whether someone will be placed in that position. It's not typical. And then the final uh, card for that uh, final determination is this Ace of Pentacles, a strong uh, indication of value, but this old woman is having to coax those children out from under this tree. And um, so it's a job that would have to happen. And you can almost see here that this is that rainbow, that familial uh, compassion and you can see that it's faded away here so there might be a slight uh, indication that something could go that way but it's not really indicated all right so that's been our drawings for today i hope you enjoyed them if you let me know what you'd like me to read about whether you subscribed or not even if you're just a casual viewer and i actually have just tons of people who view my videos but don't subscribe it would make a huge difference if you could subscribe but even if you're not subscribed let me know what you'd like me to read about make a note in the comments and i'm glad to do that that's what i like to do anyway hey i'm going to show you the cards now hang on okay so this deck by los carabillo 
is by renowned uh, uh, child uh, children's book uh, illustrator uh, Arthur Rackham. So this is called the Arthur Rackham Tarot, and these are amazing. Um, this uh, fellow was uh, born in 1867, and he was an illustrator of such books as uh, the Brothers Grimm uh, tales. Um, Peter, who was it? Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens. And uh, so the cards himself, they come in this typical uh, box, okay, and it's got illustrations from uh, Rackham all around it, which is nice. The uh, illustration booklet is just a typical uh, booklet in, I think, three languages and just with a very brief uh, talk about uh, Rackham here, but with good um, suggestions as to how to divide the cards. But nothing to write home about. <clears throat> the cards themselves. They're just typical. There's nothing special about the back that I can see, and uh, they're easy to handle. And uh, But the thing about these cards is the work. So when you have an artist who has gone into such detail for these images, and these are pulled from his works over the um, ages, I guess, you know, I guess he was active uh, 100 years ago or so. And uh, so fairy tales for children. And so this sort of stuff just really lends itself perfectly to telling stories in the tarot. The one thing that's odd, like, so for instance, here's a nine of pentacles, and you won't see nine pentacles on here, so you really have to know what the divination is, and then interpret his drawings, which are just fantastical, uh, into that uh, divination. So I like to put the cards out like this so that you can get an idea of what the decks look like if you're not a person who buys a lot of cards, or I always have my eyes open for something different. Um, I love that uh, artists uh, come up with these cards, and... Um, they put so much attention into the original uh, works, and then that gives us, and then when someone wants to choose from their vast uh, repertoire to interpret the tarot, that's even more intention laid on top of that. So I hope you like them. I'm crazy about them. So these are Arthur Rackman's, or just the Rackman Tarot by Les Carbillo. Well, I'm Mark. This has been My Journey Through Tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.